the letter, I believe, has been distributed, uh, the written letter, and of course it's a bit long, um, so, so I couldn't read it, otherwise I would stay here for a very long time. Uh, I said this when I emailed it to the principal that uh, I would do the PowerPoint presentation because if I have to read it, uh, then we must stay here for a while. So I'm going to go straight to it um, and highlighting the key issues that are in the written lecture. In the main, we know that Africa has not done well. It may have done well lately, uh, but for a very long time, I think this consensus that uh, Africa remains at crossroads. It does seem like we could be doing well, but we're not getting uh, far enough. Uh, secondly, we live in a world that is uncertain. It's very volatile. Uh, follow the news, uh, we know it's very important, also very dangerous. And then we know it's unjust, and that of course needs to change. And, and this is an indictment uh, to, to the whole, all of us, the global human society as a whole. And, and we know, lastly, that the reason actually things are not as good as they're supposed to be uh, globally, and particularly in Africa, and I could argue here in South Africa too, is that the dominant ideas and theories and perspectives as well as plans and strategies that are largely important, which uh, we've been using um, in the post-colonial, post-apartheid uh, period, are not the right ones. They have failed. And, and the failure of these dominant models, and I'll explain these dominant models later on, and the failure of these approaches uh, therefore, warrant new thinking. This is the argument that the lecture makes. That the majority of Africans are disillusioned, are frustrated, isolated in the lack of lack of what they need, the deprivation, and then therefore something uh, needs to change. And, and the argument that I'm advancing is that to move the continent forward, we need to improve thought leadership. We need to ensure that they start liberation, and lastly that the citizenry, the African citizenry, is critical, critically conscious. And, and this will help, help us uh, to better develop the continent to ensure the renaissance that um, has been pursued, um, but not successful uh, for a while, as well as social and economic transformation that the continent desperately needs. And, and, and I argue that these three, the leadership, critical consciousness and the liberation work together. We need to pursue all of them jointly uh, because if you pursue just the leadership alone, uh, it seems to me that that won't be very helpful uh, with that critical consciousness and I'll explain uh, later on. And that the top leadership that doesn't have a mentally free mind uh, also will be futile and that higher levels of consciousness based on that understanding of phenomena, a development phenomena in particular, and made for a better thought leader. <coughs> Africa, as I said in the beginning, uh, when I was starting the lecture, that it remains in a, in a precarious uh, position uh, in global affairs, and therefore we need these new thought leaders, we need thought liberation, and we need critical conscious uh, citizen. Uh, the African experiences, I think, most importantly, are in indescriptive inextricably linked to the injustice of the past. So the historical experience uh, of colonialism, of imperialism, uh, various forms of enslavement, uh, I argue and others have argued, uh, shape uh, the continent's life now and it may shape it uh, tomorrow too. Uh, therefore, these challenges uh, need to be addressed. So in order to advance social, economic and political uh, development of the continent. And, and just to talk a bit about the concepts and the ideas uh, that the lecture is interrogating, um, one is that leadership, as we understand it, it, is in the main about the processes that have to influence a group uh, of people in order to achieve a common goal, a common objective. And, and what I'm arguing is that the leadership should be more than that. It has to be that and more. So it's not just about persuading or working with the group to achieve a common goal, but it also has to be about the leadership that's based on progressive ideas, progressive beliefs and orientations that have to have 
similar pragmatic and impact appeal uh, because they have to be about advancing the human condition. And, and I argue here that a thought leader has to be someone who possess the right kind of knowledge to challenge an existing paradigm in order to advance new thinking and inspire others as well as enhance what needs to be achieved. So in other ways, I mean, if we think about leadership in general, there's a common goal that you intend to achieve, uh, but that leadership, I argue, goes uh, beyond that uh, because it has to be about change. It, it has to be about bringing change. And I'm going to say uh, probably a bit more about that when I make a comparison uh, between top leadership and uh, what is understood as intellectuals because I make a distinction that those two are different. Um, I have this interesting quote, uh, I think instructive quote from Zilma Kubane, uh, who was an associate professor at Boston College. Um, he was, she was here, sorry. She was here uh, about 10 days ago uh, addressing the UNISA, the Timali International Women's Day uh, Roundtable uh, on the 8th of March uh, here at UNISA. Uh, and, and in her talk, she made this, what I thought was an important point, that the most powerful definition of a thought leader is a person who is able to understand the larger historical scene in terms of its meaning for both the inner life and the inner trajectory of a variety of individuals. This type of a leader is able to grasp history and biography and the relations between the two. Those who recognize this task and its promise are the people that we honor with the title of a thought leader. So in other ways, you, you need to be able to understand your history and its impact or the factors that have shaped um, the development in our case of our continent and, and be able to understand also the biography as she articulates and the relations between the two. And in a sense, this goes beyond just an intellectual. Uh, by, by the way, and I say in the lecture this, that Alima's Rui and the definition actually that many people uh, seem to use or acknowledge or respect um, is that an intellectual is someone who has the capacity to be fascinated by ideas and has a capability to handle a number of those ideas. So in a sense, this is not, I would argue, what I'm arguing for here. Um, so, you, so you can have intellectuals as we have them in the academy. What I argue for is going beyond uh, the academy. Of course, in the academy we need to be producing knowledge, uh, shaping thought, but thought leadership has to be more than that. It has to be about change and, I argue, advancing um, the well-being of the African continent. And, and to say a bit about the Tom Big African Leadership Institute, this is what we are supposed to be doing, um, you know, training this uh, leader, these leaders, these African top leaders. So we need to be producing a new pair of progressive African top leaders for the political, economic, political, cultural renewal of the African continent uh, as a whole. And, and we do this um, in partnership. I think I emphasized this uh, in the lecture because it's a very big mandate and you have to undertake this uh, with others if you are to succeed. So we partner uh, with the various institutions, like-minded institutions, uh, within the continent, but also in the diaspora. And also, you have to do this through tapping in into methodologies and epistemologies that are multidisciplinary, that are cross-disciplines, and also transdisciplinary. Um, and we are training these future leaders at the minimum, so that they can ask the right questions, they can convince, they can evince high ethical excellence, and they can demonstrate leadership capabilities geared towards improving the living conditions of 